Hello, thanks everybody. Um, never done this as lightning talk before. It's part of a longer talk, which I'll post online later, but thanks for coming. So this is uh, Cut the Crap. This is about trust, and it's an extreme version. This is uh, myself, unfortunately Toby, who would be with me here is off sick, so he's not here, so sorry about that. So, uh, uh, obligatory audience participation slide. All right, count of three, I want you to say the word on the screen here. If you cannot not see the word, the word is trust. Ready? Three, two, one. Trust. And one more time, three, two, one. Trust. Great. I want you to start using this word in your everyday life. It's not a four-letter word. It's not scary once you start using it. <laughs> exactly. It's not. I said it was not a four-letter word, did I? I <laughs> not a four-letter word. It's a five-letter word. Good point. Okay. So why do we trust, right? The other day, I went into uh, the co-op, right? I took some stuff off a shelf. I went to a screen. I scanned some stuff. I took my phone out. I put it in front of a literal black box. I walked out of the store. Nobody ran after me, right? This is what trust is, right? It's convenient, right? It's a very human thing to do. Um, you know, societies flourish when they have trust. Closed societies don't flourish, right? And it just generally, it's a more fun way to live life, right? So what's different at work, right? So in our day-to-day -day life, we use kind of social judgments and uh, reviews. If we don't like a store, we can go to another store. We use judgment in our day-to-day -day lives when we think about trust, right? So how's work different? Works different because we have to go to the work the next day and work with the same people and the same team. We can't just choose not to work with those people. So that's why we need to, to invest in trust. So quite often though, we see at work, we see everything as a risk, right? We see things as a risk, something goes wrong, it's a risk. What do we do? We put in process. Let's put in some more process. It's a sensible thing to do, right? Uh, but you know, really our process really needs to save time and effort, right? We, we, we don't want to build processes to, to facil facilitate a non-trusting state, state and have it there forever. We really need, need to make sure there's a way to remove process once trust has been restored. And so what we're trying to advocate here is trying to make trust the explicit goal. A lot of what we do in Agile is, you know, we, we implicitly build trust, right? We, we do retrospectives, we do all these great things and whatnot. And it's implied that we build trust, but we're saying, let's be explicit about it. Let's actually talk about it as a thing that we do. Um, let's use a concept of something like transparency, right? In a, that's a very agile concept. In a high trust environment, you know, uh, or, or you know, maybe you're sharing a roadmap and to try to get feedback early on and things like that, you're being transparent, that's good. In a low trust environment, maybe you're doing a status report uh, to cover your ass you know, that nobody's ever going to read. Who's done that? I have. I'm a delivery lead. Of course I've done that. And it's ridiculous. So we, that's additional process that's just not, not required. So enter the trust framework. So myself, uh, Dave Hewitt, and Toby wrote the trust framework as a way to collect our thoughts and organize our ideas. Not because we need another framework in the world, but the nice thing about a framework is it gives us something to point to and iterate and improve upon. So... Um, so yeah, the, 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 very, uh, the, the, the beginning of the trust framework starts with this axiom. So maximizing trust throughout the organization in all directions creates a more efficient and happier working environment, resulting in higher value creation for the organization and its share, uh, stakeholders. So a couple of things to call out here. In all directions, trust is not just top down. It's side to sides. It's between individuals, it's between teams, right? And value, uh, uh, more efficient value creation. So. I, what we're saying here is that a higher trust environment affects the bottom line. It's more efficient to be a high trust company, and that's why you want to invest in it. It actually it, uh, affects the bottom line. Here's an obligatory slide that shows you I know what I'm talking about because there's boxes on the screen. And uh, so this is just a simplified trust model, just to call it out. So you have in, inputs into the model. You have uh, the truster's character, character, motives, abilities, behaviors the nature of the trustee trustee relationship, situational influences, domain specific concerns, et cetera. Uh, and that ends up with beliefs about trustworthiness. And then you have to be vulnerable to make a decision about trust. And that's where psychological safety comes in. You take a risk taking action and then there's a feedback loop that, that goes back into the process. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna skip a few slides here. So trust and risk. So. Um, sometimes like we like there's a, a legitimate reason to have, to have trust or to have process you know think about uh, gun handling or something like that like as long as the the process actually benefits all parties involved 
that's what's really important. So you need to have that agreement that the process uh, involves all party. Misplaced trust. Some, you know, sometimes we do our best to trust people, but you know, sometimes it doesn't work out, and it's okay to really walk away at that point as long as we put in good faith effort. So, what practical steps do we have that you can do? Establish a trust cu culture with accountability that's supported by leadership. Make trust the explicit goal. Be clear about your objectives. You know, that's a big thing. If you're a leader, be really clear about what you want. Otherwise, you won't get it. Empower people to solve problems. Review processes through a trust lens and remove them where you can. Address trust issues as they arise and actively manage trust. Use retrospective. So on the pictures here is a retrospective Donald did and one that I did with the team specifically talking about trust within the teams and other stakeholders. Um, if you're in, in EAT or Anchor, uh, you can use trust and talk about it with your stakeholders. Like, do they trust us? Do we, do we trust them? What are trust gainers for those people? Um, and like I say, there's value in it. So you want to, to actually invest in it. If you want to join our community, these are things you can do right now. Everybody has a story about trust, so talk about it. Uh, think about your own definition of trust. Have a conversation with your peers. Do a lunchtime talk. Visit, you can visit our website, trust-framework.com, or there's a Discord channel, and we're working on a playbook. We'd love to have you with us. Please contact us. And that's it. Thanks. All right. <laughs>